So firstly, thanks for uh, coming for this session. And uh, it would be really great if we can make it more interactive uh, rather than a monologue. <coughs> so what we uh, want to see today is uh, how to select the right NoSQL technology for, a, for a, any given enterprise in their big data stack, big data technology stack. So, so obviously there is there is not a very you know straightforward answer, uh, but in the in the process of this presentation, we'll like to see that which are the things still more or less uh, known to known to us in terms of our experience in terms of the maturity of the certain problems in the enterprise space. So uh, now a little bit of my introduction. I'm Saurabh Mazumdar. I work for Infosys Limited and I head their technology group for the big data practice. And right now I am personally involved with around Five, five or different clients, enterprise clients, to as an you know advisory capacity to help them in selecting their different type of big data technology choices. So what I plan to cover today are the NoSQL fitment in enterprise big data use cases. So that essentially creates a foundation based on which the organization should select NoSQL. Challenges in selecting the NoSQL databases and a sort of framework which can be used for selecting the right NoSQL technologies. Techniques for the scalability analysis of the NoSQL databases, just like, uh, I mean, just uh, in the previous session, I was hearing from Foundation DB that how, how they do uh, the scalability analysis for their uh, solution and also we'll talk I'll talk a little bit about the Infosys big data practice and our Infosys solution around the big data which in, incorporates NoSQL and other big data technologies. So coming to the first section the NoSQL fitment in enterprise big data use case. So there are multiple applications of big data as all of us know but in our experience what we are seeing mostly mostly working today around the big data are these four particular things. The first, starting with the customer relationship management, then sales and marketing related use cases. Third, more around the supply chain management. Uh, every, every organization has lots to do those things. And the fourth is plain and simple cost optimization. IT cost optimization. So these are the four different quadrants where we are seeing the maximum use of big data uh, technologies. When it comes about the customer relationship management, it, it starts from knowing your customer, knowing the entire data around the customer, and it also goes to the level of how, how you can give a very, very fast and immersive experience to your customers by giving some sort of you know, uh, capability to the customer so that they can figure out all their information very soon by giving them the experience of fast search, all those different things. Coming to the sales and marketing pricing strategy, figuring out the effectiveness of different type of sales and marketing strategy, that is also uh, pretty much important and pretty much candidate for the big data use case. In the supply chain management, starting from the product quality management, supply chain effectiveness, contract management, these are again, again the cases for big data. And fourth comes the cost optimization, which uh, many of us are talking today as augmented data warehouse, where you complement your existing data warehouse technology with the big data technology. And then the low cost near, near real time analytics, which is very, very important and very, very uh, catching the momentum right now. 
and next generation EAI through which the different applications can interact much more seamlessly in a very, very low, uh, low latency uh, with a very low latency. Given these the use cases for the big data in enterprises, the, the key use cases, if you see the refer what should be the reference architecture for big data. At one side, the right side of, uh, I'm sorry, the left side of it, we see all the different, different type of data which is accumulating every day in any organization. It starts with the transactional data, the regular relational, uh, relational data. There are the social data which, uh, which are generated based on the interaction. Then there are the observational data which are getting created through logs and uh, different type of other systems, the application logs. So these are the three main data which essentially comes to this big holodron, what we say the big data platform. And then, then bunch of stuff happens and eventually at some point of time, these are the use cases which are on the top, the big data applications. Those are the use cases they try to actually use those data. Most of those use cases are read. There are some use cases also which are writing to the big data platform. And that finally flows back to the system through the data integration layer. So which are these use cases? I'm not saying that this is the this is the end of it. These are the all six type of use cases, but these are the predominant use cases which are derived from the previous slides. So the first one is the dashboard reporting drill down. Those type of very traditional use case where you create a report, but after creating the report at the aggregate level, people want to drill down to see to go to the granular level of details, nth level of details to figure out what exactly the reason for a certain behavior. So th this, this can be any, any type of report starting from where you, you are, uh, a particular, uh, say, say uh, marketing analyst, he, he is trying to figure out, I have done some market campaign where exactly the campaign was really effective and how many people actually related really responded to that marketing campaign and, and bought some product, bought some services. Next comes the application context or insight, what we can say. It is, it is as simple as where you keep on throwing some sort of advertisement to the, to the interface of the customer. It may be the gaming console, it may be some sort of web application where based on the customer's context, the uh, advertisement is, is thrown there. There are other use cases like ask me what if analysis type of use case where you, you have a particular report, say you have a report around value at risk, which is a very, very interesting use case in the financial domain where there is a portfolio, you see the entire particular portfolio at certain level and then you apply a particular uh, criteria that, okay, if my particular equity, it gets, it, the, the, the price of the index of that equity changes by 10%, how my entire portfolio gets impacted. So it is not essentially anything to do with the predictive analytics, but based on the existing data itself, the data which can give you a very definitive result, based on that data doing some sort of what if analysis. It can be as good as that, okay, some customer representative got a call uh, and let us assume that is a manufacturing company and they got a call that okay, there is a problem in a particular device. So he's trying to figure out that what are the problems, what could be the reason for the problems. Then comes the search and discovery. This is typically the use cases of the big data scientist type of people who try to create or try to see the emerging pattern from the different variety of data. Then comes the predictive modeling, where actually based on the situation, you are trying to, you are trying to predict some sort of implication. Now, the prediction can be in terms of predicting some fraud is going to happen, or fraud is happening in a particular 
account takeover type of scenario or fraud is happening in such credit card transaction. This predictive modeling even can be applicable to any type of things like say in a point of sale, a recommendation is going on when a particular customer is purchasing a product, a recommendation is happening. The last one is the enterprise application integration. This is one where I am trying to put most of the things like caching and all other online type of things together under one bucket. So if you see many of the cases, the NoSQL technologies today, they are being used as an intermediate caching store where you try to capture the data as much as possible from the front end application and then either using strong consistency or eventual consistency, you process the data. So that's where uh, we, we bucket it more as an enterprise application integration situation. Now, this, this six being the, the, the key use cases for the big data within the enterprise stack, let us see what could be the typical solution. So coming back to this, the technical solution, what the first step is surely to get the data into this big box and process the data to, to apply a bunch of transformation, bunch of say machine learning algorithm, maybe different type of business logic, business rules to, to get the overall data which is then consumable. And sometimes even you may need to consume the core data, the raw data itself, which is more a use case for the data scientist. And in this entire thing, if you see when it comes to the layer of the uh, applications, there are three type of interactions which are typically happening. One type of uh, interactions which are more like batch interactions, which are put at the left side of it, where the latency requirement is typically minutes to hour. So people can, people can wait for a couple of minutes and two couple of, uh, maybe one or two hours. Then next comes a interaction which is around couple of seconds. So it is typically, a, say a web application where the end user is waiting for the response and he or she wants to see the data within couple of seconds. And finally, what it comes at the subsequent level, where the end user wants to see the data, the entire information, within one or two, two digit of milliseconds. So in the current scenario of the big data technologies, most of this, most of the, most of these two cases, the minutes to hour and couple of seconds, can be taken care of by regular, not no, not no SQL big data solution, like which is part of the Hadoop ecosystems. Now, when I'm saying Hadoop ecosystem, I'm just taking out HBase because that's also another no SQL uh, cluster, uh, no SQL system as such. And beyond that, anything which has to happen through at subsequent level, there we see the need for the no SQL database. Now, obviously, there are different type of thought processes. Like when I say the couple of seconds, uh, couple of seconds level response can happen from the Hadoop ecosystem. The the caveat is I'm I'm actually assuming the technologies like Stinger, the Impala, the Drill, those type of technologies which would be running on the ecosystem of say Yarn, when you can have multiple workload working on the same. Hadoop ecosystem or same Hadoop cluster. Whereas as of today, those, that type of interaction also, which is at the couple of seconds level, actually being done through the NoSQL databases. So in overall what happens is the data will come from the regular systems, regular data stores, whether it is transactional data, interaction data, or application log. It will come to the Hadoop type, of ecos Hadoop type of cluster where the data processing will happen. Then the part of the data in, in different formats, maybe some aggregation, maybe some machine learning model, that will get transferred to the NoSQL data store. And from the NoSQL data store, the final uh, queries would be served 
which all these applications will like to access at real time. So given that these are the six different type of use cases and this is the overall reference architecture uh, which, which makes sense at the enterprise space, let us move to the next section that so what are the challenges in selecting NoSQL databases? This is a very common representation or common characteristics of the NoSQL database. You, you take any of the things of interest, whether MongoDB or Cassandra or Couchbase or uh, HBase, Voldemort, whatever you want. The, these are the different layers around which they gives the, the gives the implementation. At the topmost layer, you have the interfaces where predominantly most of the things are available, like whether it is REST-based interface, script-based interface, language-specific API, and also this days, even people are also thinking of how to put the SQL. Next level, what it comes is logical data model. In the logical data model, there are different choices, starting from key value map, column family, graph database, document database. At the third layer, we have the data distribution model, and which are mainly characterized, characterized by CAP support, the support for CAP theorem, whether it is more consistency, availability based, or availability, partitionability based, or partitionability consistency based. Then very important thing is to figure out the sharding and replication, that how, how those things are managed. And also very important to figure out how, what, is, uh, what are the ways you can do the dynamic provisioning. Because when it is about NoSQL, when it is about having lot of use cases being served for huge data, the dynamic provisioning, dynamically adding, removing the servers is very important. And finally, you have the persistence layer where many cases it is just memory based. Like if you see the grid game, it is essentially a NoSQL database, but entire, entire thing happens in the memory. Same probably we can talk about the memcache. Then there are disk based, then combination of memory and disk where the, the data moves transparently across this two layer. There are many places it is more custom pluggable. Now given all these different varieties of characteristics, obviously it is very, very much challenging to select the right NoSQL because different NoSQL technologies, they support different uh, type of these characteristics. And as a result of that, obviously the challenge is what all of us see to picking up the right NoSQL database are both around the use cases as well as from the technology perspective. From the use case perspective, you need to support multiple type of documents, multiple type of data sources, which also typically will change over a period of very short time span. Because many a times you get the data from your third party from the other vendors and the data interface itself changes over a period of say three months, six months. There's a large volume of data to be handled, they have to be related. You need the flexibility in changing say machine learning modeling. Today you are using probably support vector machine to do the machine learning. Tomorrow you want to change it to say random forest. Then predictable response time and also scalability with general and seasonal load. At the other side, at the technology, obviously there are too many NoSQL solution. Then you also need to figure out what is the right type of solution to give you best total cost of ownership. Because many a times when you select a NoSQL technology, it is, it is not just about selecting the technology and forgetting it, you also need to figure out well, how you scale, how do you operate, how do you figure out the right type of skills. Integration with existing technology stack, which is also very important, and absence of any standard, which is very predominant today in the NoSQL world. And finally, obviously, the security and audit. A any other particular challenge you people are seeing in selecting the NoSQL? You know, I'll, I'll move on. Maybe we can uh, discuss these things at the end of the presentation. So now we know the, what are the use case. We know what are the characteristics. Now let us come to the framework. What could be the right framework to select 
a good NoSQL technology. So these are the six use cases which we discussed, which are on the, uh, which, which is represented here as a column. And the features needed by each of these use case sort of evaluated here that what is the level of, level of uh, maturity needed for these features. So to start with the things like read scalability, most of these applications, they need a huge volume of read in a given second. So when I said it's scalability in terms of throughput, in terms of latency, same it comes with the right scalability. Then load balancing, which is, which is very important because when you are trying to serve data at the, at the scale of maybe even couple of gigabytes, which is across say, 10 different cluster, 10 different nodes in a cluster, and say you are trying to support 100 requests per second, there is a very good chance that all the requests will go and flock around across one or two nodes. So that means those nodes will get overly, overly used, whereas the other nodes will not get used at all. So load balancing is very important. Uh, the next important thing is the secondary indexing, because many of these use cases will need the capa capability to search certain data which is not the primary key of a particular table or particular collection. One seek access, this is also very important, especially when you try to build some transaction capability on top of this, that once you do a particular search on a primary key, you'd like to get the entire data from the same store or same place. Support for multi-dimensional schema, we, this is where you try to figure out that for your particular use case, whether you need just a simple key value or you need maybe four dimensional column or you need a complex flexibility across a complex data structure, which, which, may, which may be going to the nth level of depth. And finally, though, though we are talking here NoSQL, but it is a very, very common ask now today at every organization that how do I support SQL access to my NoSQL data store. Now, these are the key, key attributes or key features which are needed. But at the same time, I am I'm taking out from this framework certain things like say security. Because all of us know the security is probably needed in each of these particular uh, use cases. And at the technology level, uh, none of these technologies actually give right now a very good support for the security. It, it is still evolving. Now, this, this being the overall, uh, overall uh, guidance factor for the use cases, the next letters SQL stable, uh, MongoDB, Cassandra, and HBase. There are, there are obviously there are many others and uh, it, it won't be possible to do the entire evaluation, but since these are the most popular, I, I picked up uh, these three of them. And, and we also, in the Infosys, we have a maximum experience with uh, these technologies. Now, if you see here, the MongoDB, they are probably good in most of the cases, apart from right scalability and load balancing. Uh, and they are good, one of the reasons also probably they are, they are quite, quite uh, popular today in the industry, many people are using it, and they are also quite old, they, they almost, they are being used starting 2008-2009 time frame. Then we have Cassandra, Cassandra actually it, it excels MongoDB pretty much in the right scalability and the load balancing because of Cassandra's uh, the, the entire thing what Cassandra goes by, the, the availability and partitionability rather than strict consistency. So that gives it the scope to really increase the right throughput because all the data gets first written without any particular consistency check, whereas during the read time, Cassandra tries to resolve the conflict and figure out what is the right data to serve. It is also very good in the load balancing because of its consistent hashing and in the latest version they also have the concept of virtual node where even a particular range of the key can be distributed across multiple nodes. So that way it is, it is very good. When it comes to the HBase, HBase predominantly good 
in the high scalability and the strict consistency level. Since Hadoop is all consistency oriented, the HDFS, so that is the biggest, uh, biggest uh, characteristics, uh, positive characteristics of HBase. And it is, it is also very good in terms of read scalability. The SQL access wise probably at the HBase there is the majority of the work going on compared to the other databases like Cassandra or MongoDB. And there where it is, it is slightly better than the other two solutions. Any, any other viewpoint around these things based on you guys' experience? So now comes this complex framework and it is, it is, I mean, purposefully I, I tried to put this complex picture just to show that probably right now in any enterprise context there cannot be a single silver bullet which will take care of all these things, all these six use case and their requirement of different type of uh, architectural or technical quality, whether it is read scalability, write scalability and all of them. So you will always find that couple of use cases are good for MongoDB, couple of use cases they are probably good for Cassandra couple of use cases, they are good for HBase. Now, the, the main question here would be that how do you then go about it? And to, to answer that question that how to go about selecting the right type of NoSQL technology, the, the, main, the main point what we need to remember is the more we go forward, there would be the need for polyglot persistence. You cannot have one type of database technology, one type of persistence store which will take care of all different type of use cases. That is, that is almost impossible. There are, there are some work going on where, where people are trying to march together. Like I was, I was uh, listening to the talk of Foundation DB, they are saying that, okay, if you go by the Foundation DB on top of that, you can define different type of layers whether it is document object based or key value based and it can get acid transaction. But I still doubt that it may take probably another 5 to 10 years to really make all the use cases converging to the single solution if it is at all possible. Now having said that, having said that, what are the, what are the Technique still you can use to select the NoSQL technology at least from the perspective of scalability. The, the basic technology what we use very uh, regularly is using the queuing model to really figure out the bottleneck and scalability of the technology of your choice. Now there it is very important to select the right type of load right type of data mix, right type of creation or depiction of the software and hardware model. Here is a very simplified hardware execution model for say HBase, where the main thing what I would like to show here is, it is not just about modeling the data nodes or name node of the HDFS when you are trying to model a workload in HBase. You also need to model the HBase region server, you may need to model the HBase master and for each of those processes understanding of how it works is important so that you know that whether it is more CPU bound or memory bound or both of them. Like for HBase you know that HBase master is typically CPU bound. It really is not have much to do with the memory. Whereas HBase region servers have quite a bit contribution from the memory because of the way the write ahead log works there. The key points what needs to be uh, benchmarked for the optimization for NoSQL technology choice, like ensuring that the workload and service center specific service demand is linearly constant over large volume of request. So if you are seeing that in the region server 
CPU, there are lot of requests are coming. We need to figure out that whether the region server CPU is constantly performing over a period of or over a range of large volume of workload, maybe starting from 100 requests to 10,000 requests. Right scalability of representative complex entities, what is the insert update rate, that is very important to figure out. Similarly, the read scalability, when we are going for read scalability, it is important to figure out how read works when entire thing in memory and when most of the things in disk. And that also gives us the next important parameter that what is the percentage of working data set is good for a particular NoSQL technology. Optimal replication, how many nodes you would like to replicate to ensure that your availability is maintained. Optimal strategy for the sharding key, the salting of the same so that you don't get into the lopsidedness and also the latency of the SQL layer if you are at all using the SQL on top of NoSQL. So with this mostly I am through with the uh, basic presentation. So here are couple of slides on our Infosys big data practice where we, we essentially have working with multiple type of NoSQL databases, Hadoop, we, we have partnership with uh, most of these uh, different product vendors and most importantly we, we have created this IP which we call Big Data Edge and this Big Data Edge is, the Big Data Edge is more about how do you integrate the NoSQL solution with the Hadoop type of ecosystem so that you can very easily move the data from the basic Hadoop based processing to the NoSQL for ease of access of the data. So as you can see here that uh, you can create an entire workflow for your data processing and the Mong like Mongo here you can have Cassandra or HBase any type of particular technology and this entire workflow can finally represent the use case which we saw in the reference architecture. So, uh, so that, that's a, that's a, uh, that is the overall paradigm what we selected based on the reference architecture to ensure that depending on the NoSQL choice, you can have different type of use cases uh, implemented with, with less uh, cost and less time to achieve the final implementation. So, um, here, here ends my overall talk. Uh, if you guys have any question, please go ahead. So we are using uh, most structured data, and we, are, uh, we have a group, and we are using those structured data into the Hadoop cluster for doing uh, processing or analyzing. <coughs> now we want to we want to show that expose the data to users, and we are trying to come up with uh, whether what most for database we should go and select. Now, in that case, obvious choice comes out since we have a Hadoop cluster, why not use HBase on top of it? And uh, since that is, the, the, is that the right choice to do? Or because the, if, then you can have that advantage that the data will be deciding in the HDFS itself, so use HBase for displaying the data. Is that be a good choice? So, th that is a wrong notion that you are using HBase and you can still use the same Hadoop cluster. HBase typically cannot perform within the same Hadoop cluster where you are running high or MapReduce because the need for block size for a regular MapReduce type of cluster is much higher and the block size need for HBase is much lower. One is at the megabytes level, another is the kilobytes level. So this entire thing uh, essentially will not work in same cluster. So anyway, you have to have two different clusters. Okay, I, maybe we should, I should uh, also mention that we are using MapArts. So MapArts, uh, when we are using MapArts as an institution, their age base is, uh, is a little different. There's a way they have, they have this in seven where the age base tables are directly on the file system. So you are not really going into the, um, the problem that you are referring to because 
Yeah, yeah. I, 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 again, still, I'll say that, uh, you know, you probably need to see it a little bit more deeply, whatever your use case is, because one thing, the NoSQL is more about random access, and random access needs data block size to be much, much small. Whereas when you, when you go for the regular data processing, you need, it is the, the data access is more around the sequential scan, and the bigger your data block size, the more performant it would be. And, and more than whether it is a, it is a edge base or Hadoop, uh, if you see the framework what I was trying to present here, here are these other different type of parameters you need to consider. And edge base probably will not excel in your requirements across all these parameters. It may or may not. So uh, that's the reason you need to go through the scalability and performance benchmark to see that whether you can really achieve the same. Uh, having said that, it, it may be as well very much you know suitable for your thing. So only way I can see that HBase cluster can get mapped to the same Hadoop cluster only when they do some sort of integration through Yarn using the optimized RC file. Um, those are the only times probably it would be possible. Otherwise, I don't say so. Any other question? HBIS. Right. Obviously, you can you can replicate this thing for those things also, uh, as the the parameters. These are these are pretty much common across any of these use cases. Right. Yeah. Just for the you know sake of the brevity. Yeah. Okay, I mean, if there is no question, then probably we'll close the session now. Thank you.